What's going on, YouTube, and welcome to Gold Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte, and we are continuing our season preview videos, taking a look in the Eastern Conference at the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Pittsburgh Penguins missed the playoffs by one point last season. We all know how that story went. They lost a couple critical games to the New York Islanders down the stretch. They had some very winnable games against the Blackhawks in the final games of the season. They couldn't get it done. But this year, things are different in Pittsburgh. Or are they? We're going to take a look at that today. So, obviously, the biggest addition and subtraction to the Penguins was um, Ron Axtell being fired and axed as the general manager. They bring in Kyle Dubas, which is a huge move, to say the least. Kyle Dubas comes in and makes some pretty significant changes right off the bat. They moved out some bad contracts like Jeff Petrie, Mikhail Granlund, and we're seeing some guys come into Pittsburgh that I think are pretty underrated. Now, the first couple guys that they brought in, um, Matt Nieto, is a guy that I think in the playoffs is going to be a pain in the neck to play against. So if Pittsburgh does indeed get to the playoffs, or even those final games down the stretch, I think that's a guy that Pittsburgh is probably looking at saying, yeah, that's a guy we could have used last year down the stretch. Another guy to watch here, um, Nolachari, Lars Eller. They're all in that same kind of category, either maybe in the press box for a couple games, in the bottom six a couple games. Those are the type of players that you're getting there. They're guys that, like I said, when things get tough in the doomsday of the winter of the season and, you know, after the holidays in January and February, Achari, Eller, and Nieto, they've been there before. They're in their mid-30s. Those are good hockey players. They have some experience. They're going to be guys that are very underratedly, I think, are going to be a difference maker for the Penguins overall. Now, some of the bigger moves that they made, and I'm moving up to that next category. Uh, Alex Nedeljkovic comes in as the goalie. He's going to be alongside Tristan Jari this season. That is one of my points of concern for the Penguins is the goaltending. And, you know, there was kind of the assessment that Jari and the Penguins would have a divorce this summer. Well, they ended up extending, and that idea of them leaving, uh, we don't have to worry about that for five years because now that contract kicks in, Kyle Dubas and the Penguins have doubled down on Tristan Jari, and it's one of those things where that's going to be a move that it could end up costing them if it doesn't work out. It could cost them dearly. But if it works out, it could look like a great move, right? Um, so the goaltending tandem now with... Neto Kovic in there. On the back end, a couple of significant changes. Uh, the first one being Ryan Graves. Ryan Graves, considering his size, is not an overall like aggressive, tough defenseman. And I think that is something that is kind of lacking for this blue line. You know, and this is not a discredit to any of those players, but this blue line does not scare you in any way. This is a group that could really use a guy like a Radko Gudis type defenseman. They don't have anything like that. Ty Smith, Chad Ruedel. Pierre Olivier Joseph, Marcus Pedersen, Ryan Graves, Chris Letang, and that other guy that we're going to mention now, which is Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson is the big defenseman addition. So Graves and Carlson come in together. Um, you know, Eric Carlson, obviously, he's got a significant amount on his contract left. He's got four years, $10 million per season. That is a big cap hit. But that's not what the Penguins are worried about. Kyle Dubas is trying to win a Stanley Cup. He could care less about what that contract looks like. They are trying to win now, and they are going to be able to do that with him in the fold. Now, there is a lot of criticism, and like I mentioned here, this blue line is very, very light, um, very, um, what's the word? Soft-skinned <laughs> is the best way I could describe it here for the Penguins. Um, Carlson and Latang both offensively minded right shot defenseman for some reason i was watching the nhl season preview and they were saying how they're going to play together that's not happening uh it's going to be first and second pair it's going to be a probably a pretty even split between the first and second pair in terms of minutes and ice time and things like that um but those guys are going to take up the majority of the minutes um you know the problem is like i said they don't have that tough defenseman that's good defensively Latang and carlson both top six in the category of sc uh, scoring offense uh, as defensemen, which is great, but you do need to play defense. And especially with this goaltending situation, you're going to be outscoring your problems, which we've seen for the Leafs does work during the regular season, but it doesn't necessarily always work in the playoffs. And that is my concern here for the Penguins, is they're going to be a great regular season team, the renaissance of the Penguins. Here we go. They're going to go on a cup run. 
But come playoff time and some of the matchups that are even in their own division, I don't think they stack up well. I don't think they stack up well against teams like the Washington Capitals or the Islanders, those teams that are just hard-nosed, tough to play against. Yeah, you may be able to outskill them when the ice surface gets a little bit you know it's everything's a little more congested and it seems like just magically the ice shrinks a little bit and that open space that was there against some of these other teams is no longer there that's the thing that concerns me about the penguins and i forgot to even mention riley smith who i think is actually yes everybody's talking about carlson who won the norse absolutely great ad I think Riley Smith might be the best ad for the Penguins. And the reason for that is, yeah, of course, he won a Stanley Cup with the with the um, Vegas Golden Knights. Yes, that's obviously a key thing here. But I think that what he's been able to do in his career in terms of, yes, also playing that defensive side of the game as a forward is very important. And I think that Riley Smith, yeah, he's going to be one of the lapdogs for either Malkin or Crosby. But I think he's going to be able to produce. And they're going to be guys... Uh, he's a he's the type of guy that Malkin and Crosby will like playing with, and reminds me a lot of what you know. I think we're gonna end up seeing if he plays with Malkin, kind of that Patrick Hornquist that can produce points, but he's also pretty good and reliable defensively. May even be on the penalty kill. I think that's a guy that you're getting here with Riley Smith. Um, the power play. Really excited to see what the power play structure looks like for the Penguins because, like I said, now you've got Crosby and Latang there, and Malkin and Crosby, and Riley Smith. And when Jake Gensel gets healthy, Jake Gensel, you know, this is a really good bunch in terms of that power play. So I wonder how they're going to structure that thing because there is a lot of guys that can play. That could be a really lethal power play, and that could end up being a real weapon for the Penguins during the regular season. My breakout player, we already mentioned him, Riley Smith. Uh, Riley Smith, I'm really high on Smith, and it seems like everybody kind of forgot about him since the playoffs. Uh, he was a really good player, and I think the Penguins got a good one there. I was definitely, as an Islander fan, I saw the Penguins trade for Riley Smith. I was like, damn, that's a good ad. You know, that's a really good pickup there for the Penguins. I think one that, you know, as everybody's so looking, looking at the neon bright lights of Eric Carlson and the sexy appeal around that, they're forgetting Riley Smith, who's also there as well. Um, in terms of rookies, I think the list is going to be pretty small this season. You know, we might see Owen Pickering jump in a couple of games here and there, depending on how that blue line uh, either ravels or unravels. Um, so keep an eye out for for Owen Pickering, 19-year-old prospect. He's still very young. Pittsburgh's not going to rush him, but we could see him get a couple games here and there this season. Um, who else is on this list? Um, Isaac Beliveau, keep an eye on that. Up front, Samuel Poulin. We've been talking about him forever. Ty Glover. Um, just a couple of guys to look at, but I don't think we're going to see much of them. Um, Pittsburgh's kind of sold on, you know, they want to win now, and they're not really worried about playing the rookies or giving them enough ice time. Also, keep an eye on, um, depending on the goalie situation, I think we could be looking at a guy like Joel Blomqvist, a uh, 21-year-old goalie. He was trying to fight for a starting spot last year, and, you know, he only played one game in, the, in Wilkes-Barre last year. Did not play well. So hopefully he plays better um, this coming season. Um, but in Liga, he's put up some decent numbers. Last year he had a 907 in Liga. So we'll see what happens. So that's a guy I'd watch for depending on if, you know, either Nedeljkovic or Jari are any good. Um, like I said, another point, you know, as well as the goaltending not being the most um, – desirable especially in that division um, the defensive structure is going to need to be really really good because there's not a much there's no real defensive defenseman here and I think Mike Sullivan's going to have to whip those guys into shape to remembering to play defense um, how is the relationship between Carlson and Latang going to go that's going to be a really big point of contention because Latang for the last decade has been the He's been the Madonna on that blue line for the Penguins, and now he's going to have to share some of that with Carlson. Um, and the biggest thing I think that nobody's really talked much about is Jake Gensel being injured, and who knows if he's even going to play for the beginning of this season. Hopefully he's back before January, because that's a big piece for the Penguins. And, yeah, I think that kind of forced their hand to make the Riley Smith trade, but... At the end of the day, it's going to come down to we need to see more from Brian Rust. We need to see Ricard Raquel. I really like the Penguins bringing him in 
did not work out. They need him to be better next season. Jeff Carter is still here. He's got to break out and have a lot better season than he did last year. You know, the depth has to step up for the Penguins, especially with Gensel out to start the year. But with that said, I think they're going to be right in that contentious spot with a lot of these teams, and that's where you kind of blend about six teams in that Eastern Conference, and two of them are somehow going to make the playoffs. Four of them are going to be very sorely disappointed in missing the playoffs. Alongside teams in their division, like the Islanders and the Capitals, and then in the, the Atlantic Division, you've got Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit. There's about five other teams trying to fight for those two playoff spots alongside Pittsburgh, which is six. I'd like to say they get in. I'm not going to give you an exact today. I think they can get in. If things fall accordingly, Gensel comes back healthy, that power play is firing on all cylinders. In the playoffs is a different story. They need to get better defensively. I think if they want to be a legit cup contender with Crosby and Malkin and Latang, you need to add a defensive defenseman because right now they don't have any of that. They are very soft on the blue line, and I think that could be a real problem, especially with the combination of questionable goaltending. Yeah, they're going to score a lot, but they're going to give up a lot of goals too. And like I said, I think they can make the playoffs. How far they go in the playoffs, different story. And I know that's been a problem for Penguins fans, but we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think of the Pittsburgh Penguins? Do you think they'll be a legit contender? Do you think they're going to be just a team that maybe squeaks into the playoffs alongside those other teams? Let me know your guys' thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.